Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers, and I've got an RV hauler for sale behind me. This is the RV hauler named Ernie. Folks meet Ernie, Ernie meet the folks. I built this RV hauler for my customers quite some time ago, and they've done lots of traveling. From warmer climates in the south to colder climates in the north, maybe they reversed it. Anyways, they've finished hauling their fifth wheel around, and they've decided to go on other adventures. And I want to thank them. They have asked me to inspect, recertify, and bring up to snuff this RV hauler named Ernie and find a new home for him. The purpose of this video is for me to go really slow. I warn you in advance, this is a really slow video to walk around this RV hauler to give you a really careful tour. Yes, Greg is going to paint, uh, count paint chips. I'm sorry, that's what I do. And, but I'm going to show you some cool things on the inside of this RV hauler. Now, when this RV hauler first came to me, it did not have the workstation configuration in the back. It didn't have the table and benches. But my customer, being the handy guy he is, he said, I'm going to tackle that myself. Now, I want to show you what they've done on the interior. But first, I'm going to go around the outside. So if you need to fast forward, go ahead. Uh, look for when I go on the inside of the truck if you want to see that, uh, what they've done so far. But here we are, gonna take a look at this 2011 Volvo 730. He's got a D13 engine in him. Of course, he's got the I-Shift auto shift transmission, automated shift, and his motor right now is programmed for 435 horsepower. Of course, that can be upped if you wanna boost it. But here we go. I'm gonna grab the camera. I'm gonna get you up and close and show you Ernie. All right, camera, have camera, we'll travel. That's Greg. We've got a lot of the usual things you're used to seeing. So we've got really nice headlights. You'll actually see that it's got some of the protective film on it, but it's got, of course, my favorite deep space lighting, Xenon upgrades in here. And I'll do the tour around. We've got Michelin 11R. 22.5 tires on the front. These are the XZAs and remember if you look at this arrow When you see the whole Whole arrow that tells you that the tire is brand new and you can see we've got just a little titch off the edge of the arrow So these steer tires have extremely little wear on them And if we look at the date they were manufactured in the 17th week of 2015 so Really new tires, they're not only going to, you'll never wear them out, you're going to age them out in a few years. Now body condition, I've got one wear mark here. Looking down on the front of the step, which gets a lot of the road debris coming up. You can see there, it's very minor. And coming back. We'll look up. You really see only one rock chip down here and then very little. You have to go up quite a ways to see one there. And then there's some up higher. While we're going by, we're gonna look at Greg and his bugbear ah, rust. Sometimes appears in these trucks, but take a look at this one. 2011, nothing. Perfect, love it. Okay, we'll go inside later. But nothing else to report on the lower fairings at all. And we even come back. Sometimes I see a little bit of stuff on the edge of this fairing, but check it out. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I got little tiny ones up here. The bed, awesome. I'm so happy how this is one of my uh, newer designs. So I've done a lot of things to reduce the chance of chips and rust and like it looks great. I'm so happy how Ernie has stood up to all the travels that these folks have done. So those toolboxes that you see here, both the ones on the front and the back, they're 30 inches wide, 24 inches tall, and they go all the way back into the frame, which is about 24 inches. 
Tires on the back are the XDN2s, the Michelin, again. Take a look at the tread. It's really good. And I'll show you the date on the other side. Of course, these are the Alcoa polished rims. The bed, really, I have to say, it looks like when it left, it's awesome. And our favorite ET hitch, the air ride hitch. And the design on the rear of this bed, what I did is in this one, I brought that box liner down over this rear tail section. So we've got, the glad hands have been capped off, so they're not sticking out right now. We've got, um, if we ever want to add commercial wiring, we've got a point for it there. It's not hooked up. There's the RV wiring. That's the light for the license plate. And we'll keep going around. Oh, going by. You'll see the camera when we go inside. We've got the hitch camera. Ladder that comes out and down. That enclosure has the winch and the winch arm goes into that receiver and goes up and over. If I could find anything as a detraction, I'd tell you as we go by, but nothing to report. Greg's favorite boring videos. Here too, this leading edge, nothing. Not a single rock chip or paint chip on the whole surface. Excellent. Same with the step. Door, mirrors, all excellent. And I'll show you, like even the, even this chrome, it, those are water droplets, but from my water in my well, it leaves minerals, but great. Really, really nice. Give you a view around the grill. I got a bug left over from my washing. Missed one, missed one. So we can see a few rock chips there and I have to come down quite a ways and you'll see a few here. Now, one of the things that I would suggest, there is a chrome strip that we can buy that goes right along the edge of this light and it would cover that up if you wanted to. The lower chrome, very good. And I'll take you inside. The interior is beautiful. Um, very, very little wear. So I have one blemish I want to point out on the dash. So right above the monitor here, we've got a, that small, small scratch. Um, we do have a stand for the GPS mounted to the dash. But looking down, nothing to catch our eye. There's our direct link brake controller. But all of the buttons are, look like new. Let me take my shoes off and I'll take you for a tour. The driver's seat is essentially brand new. Now, what this is, is an, an it's a newer seat. It's got the two arm rests. It's a National 2000, so it's got three lumbars in the back, the bolsters on the side squeeze, side squeeze there. It's got the inflator that kind of does a little massage on your back. And also this seat is the one that rotates and faces towards the rear. But I do want to point something out. The original, now you see that that's kind of a, a brown, kind of a nice color. The passenger seat is the original gray. So the driver's seat fabric was replaced. 
with the new color. While we go by, I'll show you the rest of the dash condition. Now, the passenger seat does not rotate. Remember, what you're looking for is it's got a little gray ha little handle <clears throat> right by that red button. So that seat does not rotate. I'll show you up above. The ceiling, the plastics, absolutely nothing to mar or catch your attention up here. There's the CB radio installed. So this truck does, really doesn't have an, an inverter. It's got a very inexpensive one. It's kind of a plug-in version. I'm not going to call it a fancy inverter. It, it does very basic work. It's kind of manually installed. It was there when we got the truck. And there's the rear control panel. Let me turn the camera around and show you what's unique back here. Now, as I said, this was originally a bed. So this piece of wood was here from the factory. It folds down and what's here originally is a mattress from one edge all the way to the other. So what these folks did is this was the start of their own project. They had these cushions built, the back and the base. There's that little one. I'll take it out for now put it up near the front but if you put a so what they've done is, is you can lift this and they put a very secure strap across there and what they did on the rare occasions that they had passengers they used these benches just as is so there's certainly room <clears throat> excuse me for two people to easily sit there and another two people there there's no seat belts that's not what this is engineered for, is to have passengers back there. That little attachment that you see there, that's for the netting. So there's a netting, when this is a bed, when there's a mattress there, there's a netting that goes over top of a sleeping passenger. That's what that clip is for. But I'll, I'll put these cushions down and show you how it makes into a bed. So you would take the strap off here, lower this and this cushion comes out so the cushions have been sized beautiful fabric by the way that they chose the cushions have been sized so that it makes into a bed so one of the thoughts that they had with this design they they just didn't finish it but their objective they told me was to put it back together as a bench configuration. Now what they planned to do was ultimately they were going to take this out. They were thinking about putting one of those circular, you know the discs that go on the floor and you could have a pedestal here with a table. So they were going to use you know, something a little bit nicer than this, they would put, you know, a better finish on. But they were going to have perhaps a removable table. The other thing that you can do is, I can certainly, and I've done it before, um, is buy the real table from Volvo and put it in here, the one that lowers and it's got a, a latch on the front and it lifts back up and it clips into the back wall. Now, here's the thing with the uh, table that you buy from Volvo. They're expensive. They charge, last time I looked, it was, it, when, you, when you bought the brackets and the, the plastic things that go on the back wall and the mechanism in the top, it was like shy of $2,000. It's also really hard to find them at the wreckers because they're so expensive they get scooped pretty quick so one of the options you would have here is we could look for a table at a wrecker i've already looked my local wrecker doesn't have any maybe there's one close by you but the steel supports there's kind of these little bars that are in the back wall they're here 
really carefully. <laughs> I know I measure like a million times on another RV hauler and I, I end up cutting out this back wall and I put in the, the plastic surround, but the brackets are like most of the mechanism that, that you attach to is in this back wall. So you buy the table, you buy the folding arms, you buy the plastic trim and kind of in a day of super careful measuring and cutting the fabric, um, we could put the factory table in or if you like the idea that the other folks had, if you wanted to have a removable table on a pedestal, we could do that. So that's what's unique in the back of this RV hauler named Ernie. So I'll give you the top down view just so you can see what it looks like up close. Behind here we still have the original cubby. There's that netting that goes on the bed, clips into those back clips in the walls. The foam is really nice, it's quite firm, the fabric is beautiful, very well made. And this little cushion that you saw me take out, it, it fits right in there. And the idea was when we have, if, if we did that table on a pedestal right here, you could almost kind of sit back there. Or when you have the cushions laid out flat, it's just kind of a nice little backrest if you want to sit right in the middle and face forward. But I'll finish my tour back here. So ceiling, wall, everything is great. It sure is easy when you start with the nice RV haulers with the cream puffs. Now, what I'm going to do is show you the inverter that's in here next. Okay, I've taken those cushions off. I've lifted that seat. And there's the 2500 watt Cobra inverter. Now, this doesn't have a transfer switch on it. it it's a manual thing. If you want this to supply power, you this is the distribution box. I'll call it, it's like a breaker box. If you want the inverter to supply power to this box, you have to plug this in and you have to turn it on. It's not an automatic thing. The other thing that I want to point out is the way this was done. The shore power on the outside of the sleeper, you know that chrome plug on the outside, is not running into this. So I'll leave it up to you if you're interested in Ernie. We can either replace the inverter or leave it the way it is without shore power or take the inverter out and hook this back up into the shore power on the outside of the sleeper. So remember, we've all got our own budgets and needs while we travel and the workstation configuration back here wasn't really important to these folks but they've uh, kind of been very creative with creating something uh, that I think works really well. That's really cool. The inverter, again, I sell RV haulers that have no inverter. And the plan with these folks was, you know, the inverter was not a priority. It was already there. It kind of worked. They didn't need the shore power. So that's the way it is. I am happy to tailor this RV hauler to your needs. So if you want sheepskin seat covers, if you want another camera, if you want LED lighting on the ceiling, if you want that workstation changed, I'm ready to take care of that for you. Now as well, I want to talk about <clears throat> the, the recertification process that we've gone through with Ernie. Uh, he's a 2011, he's put lots of miles on, but I'm delighted with the way that he was taken care of, but also the way that he just stood up to his travels. He has been, you know, we've got synthetic oils front to back, filters have been done, he's been recertified. So we've actually, not only have I gone through him and tested him, driven, pulled trailers, loaded a smart car, we've done all of our due diligence. We've we really treated him as if he was a brand new truck that we've never seen. But what we've done in addition, I haven't talked about this too much in many videos, is we've also, it's been my standard policy that every time I build an RV hauler or one leaves our shop, I always take it to an independent inspection facility. I take it to a federal inspection um, department and they make sure that the RV hauler meets 
all of the build requirements, all of the safety requirements of any vehicle on the road. So even though it is titled as a motorhome, it's not a commercial truck, it meets all the safety standards. The hitch installation, the condition of the brakes, the, the way that this truck has been built, the drive line, all meets um, safety standards. And the truck has been, actually has a sticker on the window from uh, the Department of Transportation that says that this truck has passed that inspection. It's registered federally and actually any roadside chair for whoever um, inspects this vehicle would be able to look it up and confirm that it does that. Now, <clears throat> we don't have to go to that length, but I do it for just peace of mind for my customers. The other thing that I'm able to do is this RV hauler, he's, he's, he can have a warranty if you would like. We've got a third party company that would put an engine warranty, transmission, rear end, turbo, emissions, water pump, um, I can provide a warranty so that as you folks travel with your RV hauler, you don't have any of those worries about those big ticket items that might crop up. Now I can do two years or four years from the date of purchase. And after two years or four years, we can roll into another program, another couple years or another four years if you'd like. So for peace of mind, we've gone through them and driven them, but as well we've had independent uh, commercial folks inspection folks, government folks, DOT, check the trucks over. And <clears throat> as well, for peace of mind, I can put a warranty on it. Whew, sorry, that was a lot to talk about. Now, Ernie has 720, I'll call it 721,000 miles on the odometer. Um, one of the things I really like about this truck is because it was programmed on the lighter end towards 435 horsepower, he had a good life. This truck was not stressed. Um, <clears throat> it's history, the company, uh, the, sorry, the, the couple that owned this truck, the company they worked for, they hauled vegetables from California up to, I think it was New York and back. Um, so they were driving in some pretty good road conditions, but also they tended to have very light loads. Their loads, I believe, were in the range of about 38,000 pounds per trip. So that's why the truck has been programmed for a lighter horsepower, 435 and it tells you the truck was not stressed. It wasn't working at its, at the high end of its capacity. It was working more towards its low end. Um, so theoretically, these trucks are designed to go a million miles before you have to do anything major to an engine or a transmission or anything like that. So if it was staying in commercial duty, this truck has almost 300,000 miles of life left in it. If it was working hard, our, my crystal ball broke a while ago. I can't tell you how long this truck is going to last, but it certainly has more than one pickup truck of life left in it. How many miles are you going to put on a truck? Are you going to put 300,000 miles on this? A lot of my, you know, and look at what the scenario is right now. My customers have enjoyed this and put tens of thousands of miles on it, and <clears throat> it looks like it did the day that it left. Maybe that'll be the same case for you. You know, in five years or 10 years from now, this truck will have a lot of residual value. Um, it's hard to wear these guys out, especially when we're pulling our light 20,000 pound trailers all of a sudden. I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I sure appreciate you letting me uh, share some information with you today and having you, uh, your patience and looking at this RV hauler. If you'd like to see a little bit more about what we do, here's some videos popping up on the screen. I thank you for your patience with me. Thanks for taking a tour and keep driving safe.